Hey, Coach, okay. thanks for a few minutes of your time today. Uh, we will uh, begin with Greg Barnes. So go ahead, Greg. Hey, Coach. Uh, Mac has said several times this offseason about the hope is for you to uh, be able to get sacks uh, off a of talent, not so much off a of scheme. I wanted to approach that kind of from a different perspective. Given the increase in, in talent that you have, given the increase in depth, uh, would, would that allow you uh, to simplify things and make it easier for you as a play caller, if you so choose? Um, so, yeah, I mean, so there's a certain, there's a time and a place now where we can say, let's line up and play a little bit. But, you know, the other part of it, Greg, is we got to a point last year where we were very simple you know, because of youth and because of inexperience in some spots. So now I feel like we, we can handle more. And, and, I, and I think, you know, some of – I think the sacks will come also because they're, they're not playing as much. You know, so I think, I think, the, I think freshness brings effort and pass rush too. So, um, so yeah, we, we have simplified some things, but we, we also feel very confident of our ability to handle a lot more. So it's a little bit of, of both, to be honest with you. Thanks. Yes, sir. Okay, let's go over to Michael Coe. Uh, hey, Coach. Desmond Evans said yesterday that he and uh, Taman Fox have a really great relationship and a really great friendship. How have you seen those two players really build off each other uh, so far this season? Well, so I think the first thing is I think Javon DeWitt's done a great job with Des and with Taman. Um, but I, I think Des Evans has, has seen – you know, Taman Fox is a professional, right? Like he shows up every day, he takes care of his body, he's prepared, you know, physically he competes every day. And so I think it's very easy for Javon DeWitt in the outside linebacker room to say, hey, do it like Taman, do it like Taman. And so I think Dez is, a, a, it says, okay, I, I want to be like Taman. I want to be a guy that's respected like he's respected amongst our football team. And, and then I think, you know, Taman has seen Dez and because Dez has got a lot of ability. And I think Taman sees that and says, I'm going to do anything I can to help this kid. But those two are playing at a pretty high level right now. Thank you. Yep. C.L. Brown, go ahead. All right, Jay. Um, Coach Brown was also talking about uh, basically the fewer reps, uh, more production mantra, uh, using more people. Uh, and I was wondering, is it a matter of you, you have developed enough trust and confidence in, you know, enough guys to have that depth and throw them out there? Or are there still some guys who may not be where you want them to be, but you're emphasizing just getting more people, you know, more, more players in the rotation. So to keep your people fresh. So I think that's a great question. You know, coach Brian, and I talk about all the time, like there's rotation for, for need and there's rotation because you earn it. And so I think we're at a point now where we've got like, we've got a lot of players where I'm like, we have this kid has got to play. You know, he's got to be in in certain situations. And I so when you have more of that, right, then it's a lot easier to say, go in because we're going to call these three or four calls or whatever it may be. We're going we're gonna to have this package on the field. Um, so, see, how I, you know, I, I think early on it was when I, my first year here, it was like, we got to find somebody to be able to give these guys a blow. Now it's much different. Now it's it's these young men have earned the chance to play. And so when you've got more kids that have earned the, the right to play, earned the, the, the trust of their teammates and their coaches, now you have more more people in the game. And if I could just add one follow, um, the secondary last year, you guys, you know, out of necessity, attrition, whatever, had to mix it up a lot. Um, what is there to be said about coming in, knock on wood, that you guys stay healthy and everything, but coming in kind of with a set core of guys and being able to build continuity as they go along? You know, so, um, so like, I don't think we're going to have to do some of the things we had to do last year. But I also think that last year kind of hardened those kids, right? And it's – now it's a situation where, hey, look, if I if you got to go play corner, you, you got to go play corner. And and so I, I think the layers of depth we have back, back there is pretty impressive. I, I mean, we Geo, Geo Biggers and Cam Kelly and Don Chapman, I think those kids could play anything, you know, um, so I, I think we've really created layers of depth. And again, we've got kids that, that deserve to play. So we've got to find roles for them and, and where they can be successful. But it's certainly, you know, I know this, CL, you know, I yell a lot less at practice, right? Because they, uh, they're they executing a much higher level. Okay, Andrew Jones, go ahead. 
think I was going back a little bit about what Greg asked you about is the preference when you have enough guys up front like you do and you have the volume of quality up front, is a preference to try to be in base as much as possible and just kind of reach into the bag of tricks every once in a while, nothing more just for pre-snap eye candy? And if so, if so, are you at the point where you trust the group that they can handle some of that pre-snap stuff, even if that's not actually what you're going to execute on those snaps? Um, yeah, so I trust our guys to handle our – our eye candy, Andrews. You, I believe that's your term. Um, I, that's not my term, but but yeah, I believe our guys can handle a lot of that stuff. I feel very confident about that. So it's so like every year we look at we look at sacks, right, and how sacks are created. And so there's about ten or twelve people that walk the earth that you just you add water and you shake them up and they give you pass rush, like guys like Aaron Donald and those guys. All right. So I, I don't know if we're quite there yet, but I do think we've got young men that when when the pass rush is executed and, and we're aware of the pass rush situation that are going to be hard outs for that offensive lineman, right? So now it's my job to create looks and to create matchups where they do get one-on-one pass rushes. They are isolated and then have them go do it. Um, but I, I think it's a misnomer to think that there's very there's very few people that, that walk the planet that just line up and rush the passer and win, right? So um, there's still a, an element of of scheme and an element of, of you know, getting kids one-on-one that, that factors in. I think eye candy is more of an offensive term. How about the depth that you that do have? Like it. That yeah, sounds the, the, I, I couldn't pull. I, we're still trying to figure out some of your terminology on some things. The guys have talked a lot about the depth up front, and Trey was saying the other day that it just allows them to be them in the backfield. They can more their raw talents could come out. Can you kind of speak to that depth? And, and it's not just the number of guys, but the qual the quality of those guys. Yeah. So I, I think the first thing is, um, you know. There were times the last, last few years, right, where we asked guys to do um, – like, I still remember Aaron Crawford against Virginia Tech our first year. Like, we're getting ready to go to, like, the fourth overtime and being, like, telling Coach Cross, like, just load the wagon, dude. Like, it is what it is, right? And so, I think I think now, you know, I think, first of all, we've recruited some kids that are very physically talented. And now, a year or two, you know, they, they've all had a spring ball. They've all had a summer with Brian – and so I think physically they've, they've developed and, and there's a lot of them. And so, you know, if you're in that room and you look around and you say, man, if I have a bad day, I might, I might not get to practice for a while. And so um, they've developed really well. I do think they're talented. I think Tim's done a great job with them. And um, I do think we're going to be able to play with big people and, and, and be able to play a little bit, you know, more vanilla in the secondary. Well, than we've been able that. To do. Yep. Okay. Ross Martin, go ahead. Hey, Coach Bateman, would like to stay kind of on the defensive line. Could you kind of go through some names you think of players that are really standing out that made the jump from last season to this season or even from spring to now? Um, I mean, Miles Murphy comes to mind as one guy that I would love to hear you talk about. Yeah. Um, so the first thing is I think Ray, you know, is playing at a really high level. Um, he's done a great job as a leader. I know you guys have talked to him a few times. Yeah, I'm really proud of that kid. Uh, you know, Tamari Fox, who missed the spring with a shoulder, has come back and I think physically he's he's had a really he's really taken care of his body I think he's really prepared to play um so I think those two kids those two kids that played a lot last year it, it's not like they we, we forgot about those two right they've really improved um you know if, if you ask me you know a couple guys that have really stood out to me is from from a fall to this fall camp you know Miles Murphy for sure um super talented moving him around doing a lot of stuff um, I think Keter Bingley Jones is really coming along you know, had a hard, you know, a few months there with, with some injuries. And, and I think he's big. He's powerful. I think Christian Varner has come a long way, um, has become a really, really important piece of our defense. You know, and then I think the two freshmen, Javari Ritchie and Keyshawn Silver, are going to be tremendous players. So um, I, I do think that room has become, you know, a, a, you know, I think everybody I mentioned is, is like, depending on what lunch is today, around 300 pounds, right? So – like, those are big bodies, right? And then I think you got, you know, Clyde Pender. Like, Clyde, we talk about Clyde Pender like he's little. Clyde's like 285, right? And, but Clyde has got real pass rush ability. And so I think Clyde Pender is an example of a young man that's deserved time to play, and now we got to get him in the right situations. But I'm sure I forgot somebody. But, you know, I, I think all those kids are going to play. They're all going to travel and, and have a role. And, and, you know, I think that group has become a real strength of ours. And a quick follow-up, uh, Jacorius Conley made the, the switch to mostly safety. What have you seen from him so far in that adjustment, and what do you like about him manning that safety role this year? You know, you know so I, I think this speaks to our defense and our team a little bit too. So, 
you know, Jaquarius last year played nickel because I felt like we had to get him going. And nickel is a little bit more, they kind of tell you what to do than you tell other people what to do, right? And, and but he's, I, I don't know if he's like the ideal nickel, but, but he did a great job for us. And so in the offseason, we kind of came to him and said, look, you know, we, we think your future, you know, both as a college player and as an NFL player, right, is as a, as a, as a safety. And he's, he's almost 220 pounds, right? So, um, so we moved him back there. And so I, I think on a lot of teams, the other safeties would have felt threatened, right? Like, here's this kid who's talented, who played as a freshman, and they're moving him to my spot. Our kids just went over there and, and just helped him and embraced him. And he has done a great job so far. You know, I, I anticipated – you know, fall camp still being a little bit of a learning curve with him, but he has done a great job. I'm, I'm really, really proud of him. And I, I think he's a real difference maker when he's playing safety. Great. Thanks, Coach. Yep. Okay, Dina King, go ahead. Hey, Coach. Uh, Coach Longo said a few days ago that year three is able to possibly open up the playbook more. Do you have the pieces to open up your defensive playbook now? Yeah, I mean, so – I think there are times that the last couple of years where we, where we had to make some stuff up, right? Where now I think we can kind of, um, you know, what we believe in and some of the things that we're really, really good at, we can kind of lean on some things. And then I think when you open up the playbook, you know, it's it's a chance to make real big plays. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, we've got a couple of guys that are that are visiting with us during camp that are that are veteran coaches that have coached at the highest level. And, and they're, they're coming to me and they're saying, I, you know, I can't believe how much your kids – Hey, how much you have it and how, and how well your kids are handling it. But, you know, a lot of these kids I've had for three years, man, we've been grinding, you know? So, you know, I think, I think we're, we're able to handle a lot. And, uh, and yeah, I think, I think we can go to a lot of different, you know, components of our defense, different packages of our defense and, and really make be a multiple attack. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Isaiah Lucas, go ahead, sir. Hey, Coach, just wanted a couple of thoughts on Kyler and Michael, what he's improved on, how he's looked this far. Yeah, I mean, Kyler uh, is, is super talented. He's doing a good job. Um, we're at, again, we're trying to ask more of him, you know, like, like we are all of them, right? So, you know, we're moving him around a little bit, and, and I think uh, he's doing a good job. You know, and, and I'm proud of him because, you know, he, he's got some – like most corners do at this time right, of camp, right after playing, you know, 500, you know, deep balls in five days. You know, he, he's got some – some nagging kind of injuries, but he's going out there every day, taking up and going. And, um, yeah, I, I have a lot of respect for him. I think, you know, he, there aren't many kids that are whatever, a top 50 player in the country that transfer and play scout team for a year. And, um, you know, he, he is, he, he is a really important part of our defense. And I, I'm, I'm excited to see him. I, I think he will take a big step forward and not that, you know, last year he was good. So I expect him this year to be an elite player. Adam Smith. Hello, friend. What is for lunch today, Jay? Um, Yo, that's a great question. <laughs> you know, usually Kelsey, usually Kelsey gives us like the week menu during camp. So I don't know it yet, Adam, but I will let you know. Okay. Just, just uh, send something over. Um, talking about the layers of depth in the secondary and, you know, you're talking about those guys that are interchangeable, can play so many different ways. Along with that, I mean, do you feel like you have this straight up, star power at corner or potential star power just at those two spots that you could just sort of depend on there? So, yeah. So, so I think going into last year, we kind of felt that way uh, with Storm and Kyler, like, Hey, look, we're, we're going to have to rely on those two to, to, to be in man coverage a lot and outnumber the box. And then Storm got hurt and we kind of had to, at that point, get a little crafty. Right. So, um, I do think, you know, Tony Storm, Kyler, I think Ladeson Hollins is playing at a really high level. So I, I think those four kids are all really good players. Um, so, yeah, there will absolutely be times where we can say, hey, you know, you two or you three or you four, depending on what the package in the game, right? You know, you've got these guys and the rest of us are going to do this. And um, I, I think that's the goal of all defenses in college football nowadays, right, with, with, with the way that people attack you. So, I'm excited about those guys, and, and but they need to keep working. And uh, they, there's still room for improvement with those three, even as those four, even as talented as they are. Is just to follow up real quick is, I mean, don't let me talk you into it. Is competitiveness a word that might describe those guys at corner? Like, what would be a good uh, adjective that uh, you might use that you've seen the first couple of days of camp? Yeah. So, 
yeah, I think competitiveness is a good word. I, they understand that there's X amount of snaps. And if I want to play the most of them, I've got to come every day ready to play. And I think they, I think they trust us that they're all going to play the role they earn. And, and I think we'll see how, what that shapes up. And I, and I think they also see us trying to find ways to increase roles of other players. So, um, yeah, I think competitiveness is a good word. All right, Aaron Beard, go ahead. Hey, Jay. <clears throat> hey, Jay, you, uh, you were talking about having guys together for a couple of years under you. I don't know if this is an oversimplification, but as communication, do you see it that much better with a group that's played together or at least been under your instruction for a couple of years? Or have they always been good at communicating, you know, when, when you're talking about on the field, passing assignments and so forth? Um, yeah, I, I think that's where we've made our biggest improvement, right? And, and I think – as the season waned last year, we were better, but but I think we're a lot better now. And um and and I, and I think we've got some young men, you know, Tony Grimes comes to mind, Jeremiah Gimmel comes to mind that that are very demanding of their teammates when it comes to. We talk about being elite communicator. We talk about there. It's one thing to say a word to get us into the right call. It's another thing to talk, to communicate to everybody kind of what we're seeing and what's going on and. You know, we're asking more of Taman and, and, and Tyrone Hopper and Chris Collins and some of that roles, too. So, you know, we're, we're, we kind of went through it as a coaching staff, and, you know, after spring ball and said, OK, who, who can we who can we put more and more stress on as far as like as a as a leader and as a communicator? And, and so I, I, and I think they've done a really good job embracing that. I, we, we are communicating and we are, I think, executing much higher than we did at any point last year right now. Okay, over to Brennan Marks. Hey, Jay, I wanted to go back to Javari. I, Mac had mentioned a few days ago some sort of summer competition, I guess, that measured workouts and classes and whatnot, and he, he sort of topped out on the whole team. Now that you've had more time to spend with him, what, what is it about him as a player, as a person, that, that sort of makes his approach and his talent unique? Um, he has got a great mom who was hard on him, and he is a really, really talented kid. And so you're talking about a kid who, who can't, who, I mean, he's at least 30 minutes, if not 45 minutes early to everything we ask him to do, right? And so that you just see a kid who's got a ton of ability and is very prepared and very competitive. So, um, you know, part of it is, Brendan, like when they race, he races with the other D lineman and O lineman, and, and frankly, he beats them every time. So how, you know, I don't know how many points a race is worth, but he won all of them. So he got all the points. So I think that's part of it too, right? Is you got a really, really talented, really, really competitive kid who's prepared. So uh, I'm glad he's here for sure. He is, uh, I, I love him as a kid. Um, he's going to be a great player. All right. We'll close up today with Gregory Hall. Go ahead. Hey, Jay, how's it going? Um, I wanted to ask you about Giovanni Biggers. He's a player that I, mean, I think he only has like 100 snaps total in his first two years, but that first day of practice watching him looked like he was kind of interchangeable with the ones. I know it was only day one. What have you seen out of his development and what do you expect his, I guess, role and capacity of plays to be this season? Um, so, you know, I, I think Gio ha, ha, is as improved as any player in our program. Um, you know, when, when he was a freshman, we kind of were like, you know, physically he wasn't quite ready. And so he, he started him off on scout team, and then our, you know he had, there were some injuries. You had to bring him to scout team, and he you know he he was on second team probably before he should have been, and, and he went through the crucible. Now he, he got you know you play safety, you got to make all the checks and do all that stuff, and you know, he he had a hard freshman year. I think if you ask him, he'll tell you that, right? But he just grinded. He just kept working, and then you know in the spring last year, every day we come in and we watch the film, we say, man, this. I mean, look how much better Biggers is doing this. Look how much better Biggers is doing this. Look how much better we we operate when Geo's back there getting us lined up. So, um, you know, he had a great spring game, had a great spring season, has worked his tail off this offseason. So, yeah, I, I think Geo Biggers is going to play a ton of snaps. How much that is, we'll see. Um, but I, I anticipate him being, you know, a guy that plays, you know, if not starter, if not starter, if he's not the starter, but plays like a starter as far as the amount of reps when it's all said and done. And then you mentioned you talked about Javari Ritzy, but what other freshmen have kind of drawn your eye these first few days of camp and throughout the summer? Yeah, so I, I think um, you know the kids that were with us for spring ball, the, the midterm graduates, they have a they have a leg up on the on the other kids, right? So 
when you look at, you know, at power Eccles and Ra Ra Dilworth at linebacker and, and Javari and Keyshawn and, you know, th those guys, you know, and then you, you know, look at Boykins and Nash, they, they, they've got an advantage, right? So I, I think out of that group, obviously Javari, I think Keyshawn has, has improved tremendously. Obviously he got dinged up a little bit like in the spring, which is always hard when you're a freshman because you're, you're trying to learn anyway, but he's improved a ton. I think DeAndre Boykins is, is really improved and uh, our, our kids notice him, you know, he is a competitor. Um, I think he is a tremendous player. And then I think the two inside linebackers are, are real, real live players now. Power Eccles is a dude. So, um, you know, we, we're, you know, Tommy, I told Tommy the other day, I'm going to start coaching linebackers, man. Like that room's like, I mean, shoot, you got Gimmel in there running their meeting anyway, just kind of show up. But Tommy's done a great job with those guys. We got, that room's really good. So I, I think the six mid, midterm kids we were excited about, and we're still really excited about, you know, the two freshman corners, I think are really talented. And Dre's bringing those two along. Um, you know, the, the other guys have been, you know, Travion Stevenson and Gabe Stevens is banged up. So um, they're, they're, they're a little bit more of a work in progress. But I, I think we're happy with that freshman class for sure. All right. I think that closes out for today. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate your time. No problem. Ross, I love the hat.